public directly. So I'm delighted to say that they join me now from Florida in Sam's case and from Rosarito, Mexico in the case of Thomas Markle Jr. Thomas, tell me, how did you learn of the news of the death of Queen Elizabeth II and how did you inform your father of the news? Oh, hello. Thursday morning, I was going through my YouTube answering uh, comments and they started pouring in and that's that's how I was informed, sadly. And then uh, text started rolling in. Uh, so it, w- it was it was a very shocking morning because it, it just didn't feel right anyway. Something was off. Um, and then... Um, Immediately, I picked up the phone and called Dad, and and he had already been uh, informed as well. It was a very sad morning. How did your dad react, Thomas? Uh, Dad was and still is uh, upset and sad about it, as as we all are. Um, We feel as though we have, you know, uh, sort of some sort of a connection. to uh, you know the late queen and the British people, and you know on behalf of him and myself, you know our deepest cons- condolences go out to the late queen and the entire the, the, everybody everybody in the UK. Samantha, it's it's so nice to speak to you. Unfortunately, not in great circumstances tonight. Uh, I'm very sad for Thomas because I know that it was one of his lifelong ambitions to meet the Queen one day. He hoped that would still happen, didn't he? Yes, he did. And um, we spoke today and he was very clear about wishing to extend his reverence, his condolences um, and just his heartfelt sorrow um, for the British royal family and the British people. As we all are, Um, I I think it's been a heavy-hearted day for all of us here in Florida. We have many, many Britons, and we have, you know, Floridians in general who are royalists, who were raised, who grew up like the rest of the world, adoring her royal majesty. And she's become a part of American fiber as well, everyone's mother, everyone's grandmother. And so I think it's just been very sad for us across the pond as well. So I'm honored to extend my condolences to the British royal family and to the British people for this tragic loss. Um, It's very sad. Thomas, have you and your father been watching any of the coverage from the UK? And do you intend to watch the funeral next Monday? Yes. Yeah, I've been catching uh, quite a bit of it on television, and it's it's just an incredible journey, and and it's amazing the the respect, and it's just incredible just watching the entire crowds uh, give their respects. Uh, so I definitely plan on watching the services as well. Um, just just such a just a such a remarkable person. I mean, she was the world's queen, the entire world. Um, I, I don't think there's a, a more remarkable, amazing woman on the planet. Samantha, uh, of course, your sister, Megan, coincidentally, was in the UK uh, when the Queen died. She has made this public walkabout uh, with the new Prince and Princess of Wales. Uh, William and Kate, but Thomas Bauer, who I know that you both know and your father knows as well, he was on the show earlier, and he said that Prince Harry does intend to press ahead with the release of his autobiography in November, despite the death of the Queen. Uh, Do you think that's appropriate, Sam? Well, that being said, if those are the plans moving forward, we can only hope that there are favorable and um, not salacious um, morsels of information in the book that it would be a tribute of sorts and honor her memory uh, more than anything. So, you know, we we wait and we can only wonder until then. Um, But very sad, uh, I think, that that's still coming out.
you know, unless it's unless it's good. I think that's <laughs> an understatement, Samantha, absolutely, because it's very unlikely to be good from what we hear. Uh, Thomas, what did you make of the reunion between Harry and Meghan and Kate and William? Uh, uh, I didn't really give it that much thought because it's not, you know, I don't think, uh, um, I think it was just ir irrelevant as far as I was concerned. I don't think it should be thought. Um, and I think it was more of a, I don't know, it just, uh, it just, uh, it just didn't seem fitting that that would be bought into the light during, during, during all of, all of this. I didn't think it was relevant, but, um, it could have been done a different way, I believe. But, you know, um, also, you know, I mean, it is family and family does have to come together, um, in times like this. Yeah, indeed. And Thomas, how did the news of the Queen's death go down in Mexico? Uh, there was a, there was a few local articles in the papers. Other than that, um, I've just been you know we've just been staying close to home and and just being being low key. Um, other other than what's what's on the news, but there were there was a few local articles about it. Not that I can Samantha, <laughs> Samantha. Yeah, so Samantha, given uh, that Meghan has now reunited with the Windsor side of the family, of course, coming back together with William and Kate, despite all of the acrimony, do you hold out some hope that this might be a bit of a life-changing event for her, one of those moments that makes her think, oh my goodness, I've got to see and speak to my father before he dies? Well, I would hope that, um, that the events that occurred with my father himself would have been causal in that epiphany. And so, you know, I, I'm not keeping my fingers crossed or holding my breath on the grounds that so much has transpired that's been serious. But with regards to this event and the memorial and the passing of Her Majesty, um, you know, I just have to say a little bit off topic. There was so much play in the media about the reunion of the Fab Four as the focus, which felt really inappropriate um, on the grounds that, firstly, my brother, you know, and the world are right. It should be about Her Royal Majesty and um, remembrance of her. But also, I think there's been so much water under the bridge. I don't think at issue is whether or not everyone should just let bygones be bygones and hope for the Fab Four and want the fairy tale solidified again. I think it, the burden, the onus really is on those who have caused the pain and those who have engaged in mudslinging to make amends and to be the ones to be accountable, apologize, and extend the olive branch. You know, I think that can't go to the wayside. So I'm hopeful for that, but that's, you know, not up to any of us. And we can only wonder whether or not, you know, that's going to happen. Um, this is this has been tragic, and sometimes it takes a tragedy to open the eyes of some. And um, by God, whatever it takes, as long as it happens, you know, that life is short. So if it happens, then, you know, then we're all better. We're all blessed. And um, perhaps we've all learned something then from Her Royal Majesty. Yeah, and that's the thing. There are so many things we can learn from the Queen. Uh, Sam, I just wanted to talk to you because I know you're in Florida. A lot of the uh, sort of liberal left wing American media, the New York Times, the Washington Post, uh, CNN, has been very disrespectful over the past few days of Britain, of our monarchy, uh, of the Queen, of uh, William and Kate as well, the new Prince and Princess of Wales. And one CNN report, they were simply dismissed as, oh, those other royals, because they were so focused on Harry and Meghan. Uh, I spoke to Rudy Giuliani on the show last night, though, and he said that very small elite 
uh, section of the American media does not represent the wider feelings of the American public, who are actually very affectionate towards the Queen, very pro the monarchy. Uh, do you agree with that sentiment, Sam? I do, and I agree with that on the grounds that the radical left have spun a narrative that is very emotional and fragmented without looking at full facts on the table, such as, you know, the charitable contributions and activities of the British royal family, particularly Her Royal Majesty, going back to, you know, being integral and involved in more than 600 charities worldwide beginning in 1949 and to the tune of billions of dollars. And so when, when some of these lefties speak about racism or disconnectedness, they are really not looking at the facts, at the big picture. And I think, you know, before they, they engage in emotional mudslinging, they should really look into what she was all about as, as an icon, as a contributor to this world that we live in and to the betterment of it. The world is a bit more dismal without her unless we adhere to some of the values that she left us with. And I think the left would be wise to, um, uh, you know, apply some of those values in their lives. It, it only can bring good. Uh, so, yeah. Point. Um, Thomas, finally to you. Uh, obviously, we're following very closely the progress of your dad. Uh, how is he doing? We're still determined, of course, that he'll make that visit one day to London. Yeah, I did. The other day, actually, um, dad plans on definitely making the trip. He's doing very well, making more progress all the time, which is great. Um, so we definitely do want to make that trip and get over and uh, definitely looking forward to it. Um, we also wanted to say uh, deepest love and sympathy to Charles and compassion for Charles and the entire royal family as well. Absolutely. Well, look, really beautiful stuff.